person develops Sadha faith, he will see Krishna. At first, that is characterized by deep uh, conviction that see, Krishna has a very beautiful Satchidananda Vigraha and he appears as the deity in this world. So the devotee dedicates himself to the service of the deity and to the service of his guru, though he may not be able to appreciate or understand other Vaishnavas. So, after that, the dis discussion of those first stages, oh, we gave some example of how the Bigraha is Krishna himself. Pratimana itumi sakshat prajendanandan. Mahapu said, you are not a deity. You are directly Supreme Lord Sri Krishna himself. So we gave the example of the pastimes of Sri Nathji, that is Sri Gopal, and the man of Antipuri. And how Mahaprabhu was relishing that loving relationship and this verse that was spoken by Madhav and the Puri. So then, in the fourth class, we began to discuss the Upadesh Amrita, Srila Rupa Goswami, very practical guidance for everyday spiritual life. And we've come now to chapter 2, verse uh, 5. Krishnaiti yasigiritam manasadriyeta dikshasti chet pranati vischa bhajantam isham susrusaya bhajana vikyam ananya mandya Dindadi Shunya Ridam Ipsita Sangha Labdhya. Now before we discuss the Prakrita Bhakta or the Kanishta Adhikari, the neophyte who has faith in the deity and faith in his guru, but he cannot does not know how to properly associate with other devotees and, and uh, according to their stage of advancement. So Srila Rupa Goswami Pad is addressing that in this verse so that we can understand how to go to the stage of Madhya Madhikari. So first he's saying, Krishnaiti Yasikiritam Manasatriyeta. If someone is chanting the names of Krishna, even if someone is chanting the name of Krishna only once, then from your heart you must respect that person. Don't think, Oh, is this person in my institution <laughs> or not? We are all the Gaura Pariba, the family of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And even those who are not in the line of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they may also chant the names of Krishna, the names of Lord Ram, the names of Lord, Ryan, Lord Narayan, depending on who is the Ishtadev, which, which Sampradaya they are in. Or even they are not initiated in any Sampradaya. Just by chance, someone gets the opportunity to participate in a kirtan and that person is full and wretched and useless and sinful. But Rupa Goswami Pad says, Krishnaiti yasikiritam manasadriyeta. Respect him from your heart. Because he chanted Krishna's name even once. Understand? You see? Even a very pious person but who has never chanted the name of Krishna. They are not so fortunate as a useless and fallen person who once has said Krishna. We are not discussing the glories of the person, this is the glories of the name. Do you understand how powerful is Krishna's name? One name. One name. Uh, of Namabhas. Even chanted without faith can destroy all your sins, past, present, and future. So that person, he may appear to be fallen, he may appear to be wretched, but this is material vision. Hmm? Even the Yamadutas, the messengers of Yamaraj, they thought, "Oh, we have to take away this Ajamel, He's very sinful." But the Vishnu Dutas came and cut their robes and said, "Leave him. A great injustice is going on because an innocent man is being taken away for punishment." What do you mean he's innocent? He did so many sins. Hmm? Many, many sinful activities. There's no peace innocent. Why? Because Sankit Yampar has some vast over Helen Eva 
Vaikuntha Nama Grahana Vasheshagam Haram Vidu. If someone chants the name of Krishna, even to mm, refer to something else, like in India, everything is named after some form of God. Gopal's Coca Cola shop, whatever. <laughs> Narayan's bicycle repair, whatever. Everything. This. So, someone may say the only name to refer to something else, but still the power is there. They may say, say it for joke, they may say it for some musical entertainment. Or they may say it neglectfully, but still, the unlimited power of the Holy Name, no, not the Holy Name, only the Abbas, the reflection of the Holy Name, destroy, destroys unlimited sins. So, Krishna Yasya Giritam Manasat Riyeta, then, Dikshasti Chakpranati Vista Bajantam Isham. But if a person has taken shelter of the lotus feet of Sadhguru and received Diksha and uh, is engaged in serving the deity and he has some bandhagyan from the diksha mantras come some bandhagyan and a realization of your relationship with Krishna so that person he should not be honored only from the heart but should be honored from the heart and what should bow down on the ground, give Dandarat Pranam to such a person. So, more advanced than him, Susru Sarya Bhajana Vigya Mananya Manya Nindadi Shunarita Mipsita Sangalabdya. Someone who is Bhajana Vigya, not only having some realization of his Vishesh Sambandha special relation with Krishna, but internally, in his very beautiful Siddha Rup, Spiritual form is serving the lotus feet of Radha and Krishna. This is bhajan. Bhajan, bhajdhatu means sevaya, service. One who is actually transcendentally serving Krishna. Then what should you do? You should honor from the heart. You should give tandavat pranam and susru saya. Susru saya means listen very carefully and follow. Everything they tell you. Try to serve them and try to be in their association. Ipsita hmm? Sangalabda means that the association of such a person is most desirable. Hmm? So it may be your guru, it may be another person's diksha guru, then it becomes your, your shisha guru. But whoever it is, whichever, if there's a great Vaishnava, we want to associate with them. Be with them, hear from them, and follow their instructions in our life. So, Sila Rupa Goswami part is showing how the Madhimadikari will behave. Seeing that Vaishnavas are on different levels, and they should be honored according to their stage of realization. It's difficult to know who is on a very high stage, but Rupa Goswami in this verse is giving a clue. He said, that person, though you cannot see into their heart whether or not they are serving Radha and Krishna in the Nikunjas of Giraj Govardhan, Chamakund and Radha but something you can know that is Nindari Shunyaridam. That such a person, their heart is completely devoid of the tendency to criticize others. And we discussed that yesterday. How when one is seeing Krishna everywhere, Stavra Jangama Dekina Dekitaramurti, Savatra Hoini Ishta Deva Spurti, the Uttam Bhagavad is seeing Krishna everywhere. So then there's no spirit to criticize this one and that one because he's very blissful. <laughs> seeing Krishna in everything. So, in the next verse, Sila Rupa Goswami Pad, he's explaining, well, what will happen if you meet such a great saint? But you see some fault. You see some fault in him. Rupa Goswami is saying, don't see any fault. 
You should reconcile it in this way. A to ještá sobáva, dva pusa, če douse, to ještá sobáva, dva nitá, dva pusa, če douse, na prakritatom je bakta, če nás se basit. Gam, gam, basam, na kalu bud, buda pejna banka. Brahma, dravatom, a ti gat, ti nere dharmai. Meaning is that the Ganges is pure. Always. But in the rainy season, then you'll see there's mud and foam and branches and different types of debris floating in the Ganges. Uh, that was at Rupa Goswami's time. Now you'll see so many things floating. <laughs> Kali Yuga has progressed. <laughs> so then you may conclude that the Ganges is impure. But no, Ganges is always mm, Brahma Pravatta. It is liquid Brahma. Liquid spirit, transcendental, completely. It is the Charnamrita of the Supreme Lord. The water that is bathed at Sri Krishna's lotus feet. So, though you may see that the river is polluted, but if you bow down to Ganga Devi and offer prayers, Devi, Suresh, Rati, Bhagavati, Gange, Tarani, Tarani, uh, you pray to Ganges and offer arti to Ganga, take bath in Ganga, do Lachaman, sprinkle on your head. Uh, then you experience how your chitta is shining. <laughs> From the effect you can understand it. So in the same way, if you see a fault in an advanced Vaishnava, oh, he has a cough and cold, how can he be transcendental? Uh, he is wearing spectacles or an earring aid. Oh, he had to go to hospital for the heart operation. So how can he be transcendental? No, don't think like this. Now, this is only superficial. If you bow down to pure Vaishnavas, glorify them, pray to them, serve them, you'll see how your chitta starts to shine. Directly we can experience this. So then, Srila Rupa Goswami is saying, Sat Krishna Nama Charita Sitatta Vidya the name of Krishna, the form of Krishna, the qualities of Krishna, associates and pastimes of Krishna, the Dharma of Krishna, all of them, are transcendentally sweet. But, just as a person who has jaundice cannot taste the sweetness of sugar due to his disease, while we have the disease of avidya, ignorance, then we cannot experience the sweetness in Krishna's Dham Rupa So what should we do? Kintuadra Anudinam Kalusaiva Justa However, kintu, adara, means with great honor. If with great honor, with great respect, we'll chant the names of Krishna and chant and hear and remember about his form and qualities and pastimes with great honor every day. Then, the, that medicine, just as Though you cannot taste sugar if you have jaundice, but the only cure for jaundice is to take sugar candy. And it's very bitter. And you don't like it, but you have to take it. But the sugar candy will cure the jaundice, and gradually then you'll realize, oh, this candy is not bitter, it's sweet. So in the same way, if with great honor one will engage in hearing, chanting and remembering about Sri Krishna every day, then that, even though you may not want to do it, you may feel somewhat repelled sometimes. The mind wants to rebel. Ah, uh, no more chanting. No more sedat, no more karikata. Sometimes the mind, uh, due to the samskaras, impressions of material life, it overpowers the spiritual impressions. And then we can wander away. So Rupa Goswami is part saying, no, even if you don't want to do it, like a child doesn't want to take a medicine and don't want to take it, it's bitter. So, but you have to take it every day and what will happen? 
a video will be destroyed and as the video is destroyed then the experience of the scintillating sweetness of Krishna's Nam Rup Kun Lila, his form and qualities and pastimes will become directly experienced such at Kar. So um, one may say I am hearing these instructions of Upadesha Amrita, but it's very difficult to follow. Because my mind and senses are like wild horses, very difficult to control. What can you do? Oh, pray to see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Kala Balila Indriya Vairi Varga. Sri Bhakti Madhya Kanta Kakoti Rutha Ha Ha Koyami Vikalaki Maham Karomi Chaitanya Chandra Yadi Nadja Kribam Karosi So the Prabhupada Nanda Sarasvati Thakur is saying Kala Kali What time is it? Kali Yoga <laughs> A very terrible time the atmosphere is surcharged with the very thick Tamagun and Rajagun everywhere. The whole atmosphere, all the activities of the people are unfavorable. And therefore, in this time which is very Rajasic and Tamasic, Kala Akali Balina Indriya Vairi Varga The senses, the Indriya, have become Balina, strong, very powerful. And these senses, they are a vairi varga, like a group of enemies trying to destroy us. And Sri Bhakti Mari Yaganta Kakoti Ruddha. And the path of Bhakti is covered in so many thorns. Someone wants to follow the path of Bhakti, but there are so many cheaters. So many mm, apasidantas, false teachings. And so the path of bhakti becomes covered over. It's very, very rare that someone understands the path of pure bhakti is very rare. It's very difficult. So the atmosphere is very difficult. The senses are out of control. Aha koyami vikalaki maham karomi. Oh, what will I do now? I am very much afflicted with anxiety. Chaitanya Chandra Yadi Nadi Kripam Karosi. What will I do if moon like Chaitanya Chandra, if you will not give your mercy to me? So Chaitanya Mahaku is very merciful. Apani Karimu Bhakta Baba Yangi Kari. See, Krishna said, I will appear in this world in the mood of a devotee. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And I'll teach everyone how to practice bhakti by my own example. So you have a very, very qualified Shiksha Guru. Last time I came here, we were discussing a few times. Uh, I came here, we were going through step by step Sanatan Shiksha. And also in Chaitanya Charita, there's a Rupa Shiksha. And the Shiksha that Mahaprabhu received from Sri Ramananda Rai, that's essentially what he gave to Rupa and Sanatan. So, Accept Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as your Bhajan Shiksha Guru. Don't think that 500 years ago he was giving this Shiksha only to Rupa and Sanatana. Hmm? But he came to guide us today. You should think this instruction he is giving to you. If you want to do Bhajan, try to follow the example of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So we were hearing how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, on, after, 
accepting the renounced order. He came from Shantipur, from Godamanda, and he was uh, traveling with his associates, four associates. Who was he traveling with? Jagadananda, Damada Pandit, Mukunda Data, and Nityananda <laughs> So three persons remembered the four associates. <laughs> and they came to Ramuna, and there in Ramuna, at the lotus feet of uh, Kirtua Gopinath, there Mahaprabhu told the history of Madhavanda Puri's life. And when he told that history, after telling that history, then Mahaprabhu said that at the end of Madhavanda Puri's pastimes in this world, he was uttering a verse again and again. And by this very verse, he attained a city, complete perfection, and went to Goloka Pranda. What was that verse? Ai dinataya dhanatai Mathura nata kadava lakshasi Vidyam tvara loka kataram Daita brahmiti kim karomyam So Mahapu explained that this verse is like the moon. As the moon has illuminated the whole world so this verse illuminates the whole world. As mm, a jewel is very valuable, so among the jewels of all the poems of Rasa, this is not a Sparsha money, a Chintamani, but it is the Kostuva money. There may be many Sparsha monies, there may be many Chintamanis, but there's only one Kostuva money on the heart of Krishna forever. So among Rasik poetry, this is the Kostuva money. This, when Madhavanda Puripada uttered this verse, and we should say that Mahapu explained, actually these are not his words, these are Radharani's words. And only by Radharani's mercy was this, there are spurti, an appearance of this verse in the heart of Madhavanda and when he uttered this verse, Madhavendra Puri opened the door to the treasure of Krishna Prem. Indeed, in the in the Prampara of Madhvacharya, until Madhavendra Puri, there was no Rasamai Upasana. That means service towards Krishna, which is the full of Rasa. Kevala Madhurya Mai Rasa Upasana. No mood of opulence at all. In, completely in Raga Mark. And full of Rasa. Madhavanda Puripai is considered to be the sprout of the wish fulfilling tree of Krishna Prem. And that sprout grew, and Mahaprabhu himself became the trunk of that tree. And some branches came out. Nityananda Bhuvana Dvaita Jaya. And Gadara Pandit, like this. And then from them, their disciples and their disciples. And you are all like small twigs, trying to attain the position of small twigs. <laughs> and that's really. Hmm? So, when Mahaprabhu uttered this verse, he fell unconscious at once, fell to the ground unconscious. And then Nityananda picked him up in his lap and was caressing him. And Mahaprabhu was weeping. Then he opened his eyes and looked around and jumped up. And he began running here and there, crying, sometimes laughing, jumping, shouting. And he was trying to say the verse, but he could only say the first two words, Aidi, Aidi, Aidi. Mahaprabhu, his body was covered with the sattvic bars. So Srila Krishna Skaraj Goswami, 
Isang kampus way da pula ka sus tambo bay banya nirway da bisara jat ya kara bahas dahinya. Mapu was trembling. He was perspiring. His hairs were standing on end. Tears were flowing from his eyes. He was becoming stunned. His complexion was uh, fading, changing color. And he was experiencing so many waves of emotions. Nirve, Visha, Jadya, Garva, Harsh, Dainya. This is the outer center. But what was going on? What was Mahapur relishing? Krishna Skaraj Goswami Pal said, No fourth person has experienced this. Fully tasted this verse. Radharani was the first person to taste this emotion. Madhavan, by her mercy, Madhavan Dapuri was the second. And then Krishna in the form of Mahabhu was the third. And there's no fourth person. <laughs> so what is the meaning? We'll just look at each word first and then we'll try to bow down to this verse and pray that some some vapor from the ocean of rasa in this verse may be carried by the breeze of Mahapur's mercy and touch us. Ai, Ai means, oh, it's an address. But there are many forms of address. But Ai, this mm, interjection, indicates tenderness. It's very tender, it's very soft. Ai, so, with great tenderness, Radhika is addressing Krishna. Dina, Dina means a wretched person. Dina means a helpless, destitute person. Unqualified. So, she's calling Krishna Dina Dayadrana. Dina Dayadra. Doya means compassion and Adra means melted. So you are Dina Dayadra. She's calling very tenderly, Oh Krishna, your heart is always melting with compassion for those who are unfortunate. Oh Nath, Nath means, general meaning is Lord. But here it means Pranath. You are the my sweetheart, the lord of my life, of my pran. Hey! Calling out again. Oh! Hey! Mathuranath! Means the uh, lord of Mathura. Prince of the uh, city of Mathura. Kada means when. Avaloksha say, when will I see? Hridayam, my heart, Twat Aloka, Twat means you, Aloka means uh, not seeing. Twat Aloka, Kataram, Kataram means pain or the emotional torment. My heart is incredibly tormented. By not seeing you, Ridayam Tvad Aloka Kataram. My heart is incredibly tormented by not seeing you. Dayita, oh my darling, hmm? Brahmyati, hmm? that means, Bra you know, Brahm, we were discussing Brahm. <laughs> hmm? I am becoming overwhelmed. Hmm? Brahm in that means bewildered. I cannot think. I, I, I've lost my discrimination. Kim, what karomi shall do? Aham, I. So I'm bewildered now. I don't know what to do. What should I do? Kim, karomi What should I do? So this is the word by word general translation of the verse. It seems very simple. Because we will read it like that quickly. Finished. <laughs> but that is not how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is relishing. 
He can just rush. I did, I did, I did. For a long time. Tired or not, tired or for a long time. There's a whole story of many, many emotions. This verse is like an ocean, and just as in an ocean, there are many waves rising and falling. So in the ocean of Radharani's brain, that is her stayba, the ocean of her love for Krishna, there are many waves of emotions, they are called the sanctuary bars, rising and falling. And so they are mentioned in Chaitanya Tamita, Nirvay, Disha, Jajagara, Vahasha, Dainya, just six, of, six waves have been mentioned, but there are many more. Because Mahaprabhu said, when you, just as when you rub sandalwood paste, it becomes more fragrant. So the more you do vichar, the more you deliberate on this verse, the more meanings will manifest from it. So, Rasik Vaishnavas understand that it is the nature of Rati, or the type of love. It is Ushna. Ushna means hot, Oh, volatile. It is volatile. You know, if you have some chemicals that are volatile, psh, they start reacting everywhere. So it's the nature of love that it's very reactive, very volatile. Ushna. And so in that love, you have what is called Bhav Utapati. Bhav Utapati, that an emotion is Utapati, rising up like a wave. And sometimes, many emotions, one, two, three, four, five, six, they may rise up at the same time. Or at different times, and then mix together. When you see the ocean, it's very, it's very irregular. Sometimes a wave comes from this direction, and then they mix together. So when some two or more emotional waves mix together with each other, that's called Bhava Sandhi. Two waves of joint, sandhi, bhav sandhi. But sometimes there's bhav shabalya. Some emotions are compatible with each other, but some emotions are contradictory to each other. So you see sometimes in the ocean, perhaps uh, the, due to the shape of the land or the blowing of the wind, one wave is coming this way and one is coming this way and they crash into each other. So that is called Bhav Sabalya, when there's a competition among the emotions and they crash together. At that time, or oh, one of them may be more powerful than the other and it oppresses and pushes one emotion down and makes itself prominent. So that is called Bhav Shabalya. And then there's Bhav Ashanti. An emotion that was high goes down. It's not pushed down by another emotion, but it goes down by itself. And then another emotion comes. So four things, Bhava Utpati, Bhava Sun rising up, Bhava Sandhi, mixing together, Bhava Shabalya, competing with each other, and Bhava Shanti, moods, a particular emotion going down. So in this verse, this verse is like an ocean, and in this verse, all these waves of emotions are going on. This is what Mahaprabhu is tasting. What Madhavendra Puri is tasting and what Radhika is feeling. Those who are Rasik, when they utter this verse, when they hear this verse, remember this verse, then they become lost in that ocean. It's alive. So, the Sanchi is mentioned here in Chaitanya Charita, Nirved. Nirved means Atma Ninda Nirvedaha, self criticism. Criticizing oneself. This mood. Vishad means anutapo vishadaha. Vishad means regret. Jadya. Jadya means becoming stunned. And then you cannot remember anything. Garva means ahankaro garva pride. Dainya means Atmani Ayogya Buddhi. Dainyam. Atmani Ayogya Buddhi. The awareness, the self-awareness 
that I am completely worthless and unqualified. That's dying. So how is it possible? Garava means ankar, ego, pride, and dainya, humility. So sometimes these bars, they are crashing, they are against each other, they, make, they, they compete with each other. But they can mix as well, it depends on the circumstances, even what seems to be contradictory can mix. And it, actually, it is the nature of Radharani's Madhanakya Mahabhav that all the bars can come at the same time. without contradiction. Harsha. On the one hand, there was Vishad, regret. But on the other hand, Mahaprabhu, it said Mahaprabhu experienced Harsha, that is jubilation. Yeah. And though it's not mentioned here in this verse, there are many other sanctuary bars like Asuya. Asuya means uh, some hostility to someone. That is called Gunepi Dosha Ropanam Asuya. Even though a person has good qualities, but still you superimpose some faults on that person. It's like, see Krishna. He's Sadguna Sagar. He's the ocean of good qualities. But sometimes Radharani, when she's upset, she um, imposes. So many faults of Krishna. So that sanctuary bhav is called Asuya. There's prana in this verse. There's man in this verse. And especially, we should know that this verse is in the mood of Matura Viraha. Matur Viraha. Matur Viraha means Krishna has gone to Matura. And Radhika is left behind him and And she's uh, extremely aggrieved in separation. How can there be harsha, jubilation and also uh, lamentation? In the reason is because Radhika is in Adiruddha Bhav. Prem, Sneha, Man, Pranay, Rag, Anurag, Bhav, Ruddha Bhav, Adhiruddha, Modan, Mohan, Madan. These are the stages. So Ruddha Bhav is only in the gopis of Prandavan. No one else has this Ruddha Bhav. The queens of Dwarka don't have it. Sita Devi loves Ruddha but she does not have Ruddha Bhav. Some portion of the symptoms of Ruddha Bhav may come in Subhav. And some of the Priya Namasakas, but not independently, only in the wake of when Braj Gopis have that bhav, then something it may manifest to them also. But the Gopis, they have Ruddha bhav, and more than that, Adi Ruddha bhav. So it's a great mystery. What does Ruddha bhav mean? Do you know what a Ruddha means? It can mean swabhavik, natural. But especially, Let's say that there is a stage. So if someone climbs up onto the stage, so everyone is down there, but now this person is Guruddha. They have ascended to a higher level. So that's called Guruddha. Who has ascended to a higher level? If you're standing on the ground and then someone climbs onto a chariot, now they are Ruddha on the chariot. Rupa Goswami said, Oh, Lord Jagannath is entered up. He is Aruddha. He is risen up onto his chariot in the Ratyatra festival. So, this is the meaning of Aruddha. It means having risen up to another level. So, though all different types of devotees, and even in Vrindavan, they have prayed. But it cannot be compared to the gopis because they have Rudhava. It's another level. It has so many characteristics. But I just mentioned one. Anuragas, Sumvedagas, Prabhupada Prakasita, Yavadas, Ravidis, Jet Bhava, Ityavidiyate. In the definition of, of Rudhava, in 
transmission. The first symptom is called Swasambhati Dasha. Swasambhati Dasha means that Anurag, the love of Braj Gopis, becomes the object of its own experience. Blank stairs. Yes, not easy to understand. You should know that the Bhakti is the play of Samvit and Ladini. So you have thoughts in your mind. So the transcendental associates of Krishna also have thoughts. But the waves, the vrittis of their mind, there are two types. One is Samvit. And that gives them perception of Krishna. Mm -hmm. You see, no one actually sees directly any object. They see a vritti in their mind of that object. So, that, that's why, depending on the level of the love of a person, Krishna, someone will see Krishna more and more beautiful. Uh, if Kamsa Maharaj sees Krishna, then he will think, oh, it's Yamaraj, death has come. But Krishna is very beautiful, because he has no love. Uh, but if the coward boys will see Krishna, oh, he's sweet. If Madhya Shoda will see him, more sweet. If the gopis will see him, he's more sweet. If Radharani will see him, then he's most sweet. So the vritti of some bit causes the perception of Krishna. And the vritti of Ladini causes the feeling. Hmm? Abhilas, I want to serve him. I want to be with him. I want to serve him. And I want to have very close, intimate friendship, heart to heart with him. Hmm? But what Prabhupada Abhilas? Anukul, Seva Abhilas, and the Sohar Abhilas. I want to be with Krishna and serve him in a favorable way by which he will be very pleased and be very intimate and close to his heart. So this feeling is coming from Ladini, Savit and Ladini. So in the mind of the devotees, then, seeing Krishna, Samvit is showing Krishna Ladini is there. This is how to serve him. Like the experience in the mind of subject and object. Understand? So, when Mahabhav comes, it goes to the stage Swasambhaita Dasha. That is, that the vritti of Anurag becomes its own object. Anurag becomes the object of its own experience. That means that this vritti that was manifesting the beauty of Krishna, and this vritti which was Manifesting, oh, I want to serve and love him, remains there. And another two vrittis come above that and look at this. Hmm? Understand? So now a Sanvit vritti has come. Hmm? Looking at hmm, the experience of Krishna in the mind and the experience of the person who is seeing Krishna, subject and object both. So then that person is experiencing Krishna and themselves from a third point of view. Understand? So that is called Swasambhati Dasha. And therefore it's called Rudra Bhav because the ego of who you are has gone on to another level, another stage, and is looking uh, as if from a third point of view. You see? This is why Radharani said.
love it and he is not my lover. Root the path. Because this is on another level. This is not me and this is not him. Our hearts have become one. You see? So this is root the path. So then, what is Adi Rudha Bhav? <laughs> oh, just as the uh, Vritti of Samvita and Ladini was set up on another level. But it's increasing, increasing over time. It will go on another level. unlimited. Just like if you have a candle and you put a mirror this side, then there'll be two candles. And if you put a mirror that side, then there'll be three candles. No, how many candles will there be? Unlimited. <laughs> so Radhika's bow is like this. How she's relishing Krishna outwardly and inwardly in so many ways cannot be expressed. So this verse, <laughs> this is Adirudhubhav, okay? <laughs> this verse is spoken in Adirudhubhav. And in this Adirudhubhav, there is incomparable happiness and distress. Both. Why? It's just like How can you have happiness and distress at the same time? No! You must have happiness and distress at the same time in order to taste. You see? If you are hungry and you're eating, it's very nice. But if you are not hungry, then eating. If you're only hungry, it's only pain. And if you're eating and you're not hungry, then it's also pain. So where is the happiness? When the eating and the hunger is at the same time. So in this Adhirudha Bhav, there is unlimited ananda, unlimited bliss, because there's meeting. Meeting is like eating. <laughs> and separation is like hunger. And both are there at the same time. So there is such bliss in Adhirudha Bhav. It, even all the bliss in the whole universe and all the universes together cannot equal this joy. Because at the time of separation, there's meeting in the form of sporty. Different kinds of sporty. Sometimes inside, sometimes outside. Sometimes the sporty outside is being seen, but not believed. And so there's meeting with Krishna, but also the meeting with Him is increasing the separation. That's in stages of mm, Rati, Prem, Sneha, Manak, Pranayana. But when love comes to the stage of Anurag, then there's a meeting with Krishna which is completely believable. A sporty, a vision of Krishna. It's called Vipralamba Vishporti. And it's indistinguishable from actually meeting Krishna. The only problem is, with this Vipralamba Vishporti, that suddenly when Krishna disappears, then the suffering becomes dull. Then, when Rudra Bhav comes, then there is what is called Vipralamba Krita Pradur Bhav. A sporty of Krishna, which is indistinguishable from meeting. And it is just pure bliss of, the, of meeting, without any fear of separation in it. That is called Vipralamba Krita Avir Bhav. So, These emotions are the cause of the Anubhav, that is the reaction. This verse is the Anubhav, the reaction to such emotions. Now this verse, of course, is spoken in the state of Mathura Viraha. So I want to just set the scene somewhat for the verse. What is Mathura Viraha? Perhaps you know that Kamsa Maharaj, he sent so many demons to Vrindavan to kill Krishna. But they never came back. 
After some time, Kamsa Maharaj realized there must be some mystic power in that forest of Vrindavan. So we cannot kill this boy there. But if we can bring him from Vrindavan to Mathura, then I'll be able to kill him. So he came up with a plan of oh, coward boys that like wrestling. So we'll organize a big wrestling competition uh, for the pleasure of my Ishtadev, Rangeshwara Mahadev, Lord Shiva. And we'll, we'll bring Krishna to Mathura and to watch the wrestling and we'll invite him to take part and then we'll kill him and then offer his dead body as uh, prasad to uh, Rangeshwara Mahadev, my deity of Lord Shiva. That was Kamsa's plan. So Kamsa thought, oh Krishna has an uncle named Akura. That means because Kamsa thinks he's the son of Vasudev and Devaki. So Akura is related to them as Krishna's uncle in, by that relationship. So if we send Akrura, then Krishna will come. So he told Akrura, he gave a golden chariot, and Akrura went to Vrindavan, and he spoke with Nanda Maharaj, and he spoke with Balaram, he spoke with Krishna. Krishna didn't want to go, but Balaram was persuaded, because Akrura said that, oh, your father, Basu, Balaram's actual father is Vasudev. Your father is imprisoned by Kamsa Maharaj. And Devaki is there. He said Devaki is Krishna's mother. Krishna doesn't accept it. But he said, so your mother and father, Vasudeva and Devaki, they're being tortured. Kamsaraj is taking a sword and threatening to cut them. So you, they're in prison. You must come and save them. And he spoke to Nanda Maharaj. And Nanda Maharaj has a very close loving relationship with Vasudeva Maharaj. is his cousin brother. So Nanda Maharaj agreed, oh, okay, it will be good, we can go, go to the city. The boys have never been there before. They're from the village, from the dairy farm, they can see this big city, the metropolis. And it will be a good experience for them, then they'll come back. So Nanda Maharaj agreed. So then the next morning, Krishna came out from the house, Praj Gopis surrounded him. And now they understood that for sure Sri Krishna was going to Mathura. And the Praj Gopis surrounded him and they were all gazing at his beautiful face. And they were very terrified that they are going to lose him because he would never left Vrindavan before. And they began to cry very loudly. They said, Oh Krishna, you are our only shelter. Without you we have nothing. Oh Prabhu, please don't abandon your maidservants. Gopis are Krishna's controllers. He's Gopinath. That means whose nath is a Gopi, who's controlled by the Gopis. They're his friends, his equals. But they're also his maidservants. They have everything to him. And when the humility comes, then they say, Oh, we are your dasis, we are your maidservants. Oh Krishna, our homes are like a forest full of wild animals, like the mother in law. And the forest, that's really our home, where we meet with you and serve you. You make everything in reverse. Without you, friends become enemies. Without you, with you, Poison becomes nectar, but without you, even nectar becomes poison. Please, don't go. If we don't see your smiling face, we'll definitely die. Now you know that love is never expressed openly. Because it's like the, a candle inside the house shines out through the windows. So love is like a candle in the heart, shines out through the eyes, it's not expressed openly. But if you express it openly, open the mouth, it's like opening the door and the wind will blow and the candle may blow out. So love is never, that wind is bright. So love is never expressed, but now the gopis are directly saying, we cannot live without you, we'll die if we don't see you. You are our everything. So how is that possible? It indicates that if the candle will fall over 
and set fire to the carpet and the curtains and the whole house is on fire. Yeah? Then if you open the door, then nothing will happen. <laughs> it means their brain has become so high and so powerful that they must open the door of their mouth and because they cannot live, they feel as if they are about to die. So, Gopi said, Look, Kamsa is very wicked. And now he sent this person, Akrura, his friend. This wicked Kamsa has sent his friend, Akrura, to come and take you there. How can we know that you're going to be safe? If you are if you're given, Nanda Maharaj and Yashoda have given you in the hands of a friend of Kamsa. We'll be so worried about you and we'll be thinking how you must be suffering there. Because gopis, they don't care for their own unhappiness. Their, separa their pain of separation is thinking that Krishna is unhappy. So when gopis were speaking like this, Krishna was trying to, you know, boys don't cry, right? So Krishna was trying to control his emotions. But he could not stop and now tears were coming. And he was wiping away his tears. He, Krishna said to gopis, Actually, Kamsa is very weak. There's no need to worry or be afraid of him. Mm. But even though he's weak, he's become so aggressive and he's giving problems to my devotees. So don't worry, I'll go there, take care of him and save him my devotees. And then, I, I say, I will return. I will return very soon. So, you know, if someone is leaving and you cry, that's because you have to leave a place at an auspicious time. But if when you're leaving, someone is crying, that's considered to be inauspicious. So then the journey will not be. So Krishna told Gopi, don't cry, I am leaving now. So you don't cry because it will make it inauspicious. So now gopis are in a bind, right? Because they don't want to make it inauspicious for Krishna. But how can they not cry? Krishna spoke like this. So just as see Krishna was speaking in this way, surrounded by gopis who are in a very emotional condition, then Nanda Maharaj and Madhya Shoda came, Balarama came. And Akrura bought the chariot. So then, it was very difficult for Krishna to look away from the gopis who were surrounding him. But with a great endeavor, he turned his sight away from them. And along with Balaram and Akrura, he, Aruddha, he became, he got up onto the chariot. So then, Braj Gopis were crying and when Mother Yashoda saw this, she could not control herself. And she began to cry also. And Nanda Maharaj began to pacify Mother Yashoda. Nanda Maharaj said, Oh Yashoda, don't think that I am happily going to Mathura. This is a duty that must be done. But you should not worry. Because I will never accept, because now a crew had come and said, actually Krishna is not your son. Krishna is the son of Devaki and the boss of Dev. Now Madhishod is crying, maybe he'll go there and they'll persuade him and he won't come back. Nanda Maharaj said, don't you worry. I will never accept that Krishna is the son of boss of Dev and Devaki. He is our son. And I will not delay in returning. I'll come back at once when our duties are done, I'll come back at once. Do you think that I don't understand that the bridge buses cannot live for one moment without Krishna? I understand this. So you should be peaceful. After Bosudev and Devaki are freed from the prison, I'll return with your son at once. So in this way, Nandamaraj pacified Madhya Shoda and she felt some confidence from his words. And now she felt some confidence. She looked at the gopis who had no confidence at all. They thought this is a disaster. That's the nature of praying. 
ಅನಿಷ್ಟು ಸಂಖಿನಿ ಬಂದು ಹೃದಯಾನಿ ಭವಂತಿ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಅನಿಷ್ಟ ಸಂಖಿನಿ ಬಂಧು ಹೃದಯಾನಿ ಭವಂತಿ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ವೇನ್ ದಸ್ ಲವ್ ದಸ್ ಓಲ್ವೇಸ್ ಅ ವರಿ ದಟ್ ದ ವರ್ಸ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ವಿಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪ್ just like if a mother has a young child and they it's their first day at school and they're supposed to come back at 3 o'clock if it's 3:40 3:30 then what happened and all she starts to think of all terrible things love makes us consider the worst thing could have happened so the braja gopis they though mother yashoda was somewhat pacified by nanda maharaj but the braja gopis were thinking the worst he'll be gone and we'll never see him again So Maria Shoda she saw gopis they were fainting falling on the ground she came with water and sprinkled water on the gopis who had fainted and was picking them up and trying to console them So then seeing that a crew was about to pull away in the chariot Braj gopis called out hi hi and they surrounded the chariot some of them grabbed the wheels some of them grabbed the back some of them came in front of the horses some of them lay down in front of the chariot so they couldn't drive away they were ready to do anything they wanted that uh, just like indra had tried to destroy braj with thunderbolts and everything they were praying for some natural disaster should happen just now just to somehow krishna should not leave so when the gopis surrounded the chariot and grabbed the wheels and grabbed the horses and they were crying alas alas yes. then hmm? one of the symptoms of rudabhav is asan janata rid vilolan that it, the influence of it spreads out and churns the hearts of everyone who is nearby especially radharani's um mohanakya mahabhav it has pramanda kshoba karita that means that it it disturbs the entire universe so because of that at that moment when gopi surrounded the chariot and were crying loudly then all the cows and bulls in braja came running there and surrounded the chariot the deer came running out of the forest into the village and all the animals the squirrels and everyone came running out of the forest with tears streaming down their eyes and surrounded the chariot the birds were assembled in the sky above the chariot and were flying around and uh, shrieking it was a very painful emotional moment the stones on giraj govardhan are like hearts which were broken and the stones cracked and began to roll down the hill and bring the trees down with them when krishna saw the great pain that he was causing to the gopis and all of braja by living he was unable to check his tears and he was trying to wipe them away and see krishna it was just his heart is so soft yeah, he is dayatranath whose heart is always melting in compassion for those who are suffering how can he go he can't go and he started to faint lose consciousness completely so he was about to fall and akrura he had the reins in one hand and then with the other hand he put an arm around krishna's waist mm-hmm. to show to her i will not let him fall but actually akrura wasn't thinking i'll not let him fall he was thinking krishna might try to jump off the chariot and go so i'm going to hold on to him and get the horses going so as krishna he became unconscious and akrura was holding him up with one arm then the Akrura looked at Balaram and Nanda Maharaj. They gave him a signal, and then he cracked his whip, and the, ch- the horses began to move. And because Gopis and, and others were lying on the ground unconscious here and there, he had to make the chariot go in a zigzag way. 
to avoid them, and then he was gone. And gopis were crying. Govinda Damo You are a thief. I have to arrest you and imprison you in a cave of Govardhan. 
And then he picked me up in his arms and took me to a cave of Govardhan. Hmm? Oh, Lalita, don't think that I am mad or that it was just a dream. It's real. But then, again, he disappeared. So if he's going to go and leave me and be hot on it, just let him go. But he should not keep appearing and then disappearing again. This is too much. So in this condition, Erratica is speaking this verse. Aiti nadaya karna zahi Mathura nata kandava lukshase Ridhyam dvara loka kataram Daita brahmati kim karomyam the first line, I Dina Dayata, very tenderly, O oh Nat, O oh my Prana Nat, O oh my sweetheart. You are Dina Dayatra, your heart is always melting with compassion. That means that whenever any Brajabasi was in a difficulty, you always saved them. Hmm? When Nanda Maharaj was being swallowed by the snake in Ambikavan, Krishna came and saved him. Hmm? When the coward boys were being swallowed by Agasur, Krishna saved him. When Indra tried to smash the whole of Braja, then Krishna lifted Giraj Govinda and saved us all. Because he is Dina Dayadra, his heart is always melting with compassion. He cannot tolerate any suffering of the bridge passes. So now we are suffering. But he cannot tolerate any suffering. That means he must come back. Surely he will come back. Here, Radhika Aidina, she say, Aidin, I am most wretched. Why? She's, these sanctuary baths, the waves in the ocean here first, Nirved, Atmaninda, criticizing herself. Oh. Why couldn't I stop him? I wanted to serve him in so many ways. But I never fully pleased him. This is also a symptom of Rudabhav. That's okay, Piyati Shankaya. Kinna Plam, that's okay. It's okay, Piyati Shankaya means even though Krishna is completely pleased and completely happy, that Gopi feels in anxiety, she becomes emaciated with anxiety that he's not happy, he's undergoing some discomfort. So though Braj Gopis please him more than anyone, they, Radhika feels, I have not pleased him. So Atmaninda, she's criticizing herself. I am Dean unqualified. Vishad, another wave is coming. And this is compatible. Wave, Vishad, means Anutat, regret. Oh, if he had not left then I would have served him in this way and this way. She has always new desires to serve in new ways. And they're all now unfulfilled. Why didn't I serve him in these ways before? But now there's no chance. Now it's over. So I am the... But Krishna... Dayadra... You are very merciful. So surely you must come and save us. But then, the next moment, Bhav Shabalya took place. Another mood came. Hmm? What is that? Asuya. So in the first line, she's saying how wonderfully qualified Krishna is, so compassionate. And now in the second line, she's seeing fault in him. Oh! You are Dayatranath, the lord of bridge buses. But now you are not Brajanath, you are Maturanath. You have gone to the big city. So in the big city, there you are being honored and respected like a prince. You are not a boy from the dairy farm. Now you have become part of the Katriya royal family, the Yadu dynasty. And all are honoring you and worshipping you. You have so much unlimited wealth and opulence there now. So why will you remember us, coward girls, who are milking cows and living in the dairy farm, in the, go the 
Gaushala. They live in the Gaushala, yeah, the house, but the place where they go, 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 go. Why will he remember us? Then the Isha, jealousy came. There are so many beautiful girls in Mathura. And they are not coward girls, milking cows, they are princesses from the royal families. Now Krishna must be meeting with them. Now he is Mathura Nath. He's not Gopinath. He's Mathura Nath. That means Mathur Ramani Nath. He's the beloved of the young princesses of the royal families in Mathura. So, Radhika thought, Mathura is such a strange place that if someone goes there, they forget everything about their life that happened before. So I think that that must have happened to Krishna. That he's gone there. And by the influence of that place, he's forgotten about his life in Braja. And he's forgotten all about us. So he won't return. Alas, alas. Sometimes Radhika feels Garva. Garva is, is a pride. Another wave comes. Oh, yes, he may be meeting with some princess of Mathura, but he's not happy. He cannot be happy, I know. Because even when he meets with another heroine, at that time, because he knows that I am suffering in separation, though he's in her arms even, he cannot feel any happiness because he's suffering only remembering me. But I don't want him to suffer. He should come back. So sometimes guard comes. That is the ankar ego. Well, he, without me, he cannot be happy, even if he's with some beautiful girl. And, and then you have the kanta slick shape or uh, more uh, kanta slick kanta slick shape uh, morcha morchana means that Krishna is meeting with a very beautiful princess. But when he's meeting with her and she embraces him, but he's only remembering Radhika, then Krishna faints. And by the power of Radhika's love, who is far away in Mathura. So Mathura, Nava, Kadaval. Kadaval, I'm saying, when will I see you again? And when she called out, Kadaval, I'm saying, when will I see you again? Then Jajja came. Jajja means becoming inert, becoming stunned. So, the symptom of uh, Jadya, Jadya comes when just before you're about to faint. Or, after you fainted, when you come back to sense, then you have Jadya, iner inertness. It's a complete breakdown of the intelligence. One forgets everything. And he cannot uh, understand how to deal with any situation because the discrimination is not working anymore. So one goes through that stage of jadya on the way to fainting and on the way out from fainting as well. And the, the symptoms are, when jadya comes, the person is just silent and in a state of forgetfulness. And only they blink their eyes. Radhika began like this. Ridyam Tvara Loka Kataram Not seeing you, my heart is breaking. This indicates the unspeakable suffering in the stage of Mohanakya Mahabhav. This suffering is so intense that the waves of this emotion go out and even the fish in the Jumuna begin to cry. The whole universe becomes disturbed. Daita means my darling, my beloved. There is some Pranay. Pranay means confidence. The confidence that he is my beloved and cannot leave me. 
Not possible. If you go, but he cannot leave me in the heart. He cannot become indifferent to me under any circumstances. Just like in Pranay Geet, Krishna is very in, showing indifference to the gopis. Oh, why did you come here in the middle of the night? Was it to see the forest? It's beautiful, isn't it? You've seen it now. Go home. Husband's waiting for you. Yeah? Krishna spoke these words, very heartbreaking words to the gopis. But they didn't accept them. Why pranay? It cannot be true. I am yours and you are mine and this is forever. So daita. If you can come or if you cannot come. But I am yours and you are mine. Daita. Brahmyati. Now I am confused. Why? Oh daita, my beloved. I am remembering. Our beautiful pastimes together. And remembering this, now I am becoming confused because you said, I say, I will return. In a few days, just now I will return. But now so many days have gone by. And what are those days like? Yuga etam nemeshena chakshusha prabhishayetam. Sunyayetam jagat sarvam govinda virahename. One moment is like thousands of years. That is called Chanakalpatra. Uh, that one moment seems to be like thousands of years. So even though Krishna is gone one day, two days, three days, four days, but each second of those days seems like yugas. But on the other hand, Purnamasi Devi has said, Krishna always keeps his promise. Satyavartam satya param tri satyam satyasyonim nitaacha satyay satyasya satyam ritanat satya netram satyatmakam tam sharam prapanna. Krishna is, his vows are true, what he says is true, he's the embodiment of truth. Everything about Krishna is true. So he said he would return. But the reality is, I'm saying that he has not returned. So I am completely confused. Daita Brahmyati. Kim Karom Yaham. What should I do now? She's speaking to her Sakis. This is one of the symptoms of the Jadya when the, the memory is lost and the intelligence is working and one doesn't know what to do. Then now, Kim Karom What do I do now? What do I do now? But Jadya is the stage just before fainting. So then Radharani fainted. And this is why when Mahaprabhu he uttered this verse, when he got he uttered the whole verse and when he got to the end of the verse he fainted. Then afterwards when he came back into sense, he could not say the whole verse. So Radhika fainted. But you should know that what is this fainting? In Galok Vrindavan, not only in Galok Vrindavan, in Bhava Vrindavan also. Vrindavanam Pratyajya Padamekam Nagachati. Krishna never leaves. He never leaves. When Krishna went to Mathura, even he didn't leave. Just like in the Rasalila, when Krishna hid from the Braj Gopis and he was from a hiding place watching their separation. But really he was there. So similarly, he didn't go to Mathura. He did, but he didn't leave Brindavan. Because Krishna can expand himself. So Krishna was there in Aprakat. Though no one could see him, he was there. So what happens when Radhika has very intense spurti, or when Radhika faints and becomes outwardly unconscious, she's entering from the Prakat Lila, where Krishna has gone with it and going into the Aprakat Lila. Mm -hmm. Where Priya Priyatama, mm -hmm. that is the Priya Radhika and Priyatama, her most dear most Krishna, are always together uh, enjoying their beautiful Nikonju Lila. When she faints, she's going into the Aprakat Lila, Nitya Lila. So the, the last word of the verse is not the last word. It's only the beginning. 
So, if you are worried, how can I follow Vajo Vegam, Manasakoda Vegam, Jiva Vegam, all these things? Then Krishna himself came into this world as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He said, Look, I'll show you. Watch me. Aidina Dayadanata. By his life, by his teachings, how he was absorbed in relishing this verse and verses of Srimad Bhagavatam and so on. He's showing by his own example. So if you will only speak about Krishna, hear about Krishna, remember Krishna and relish these topics, how deep they are. We are not even scratching the surface. There is, it's so unlimited. So if you, in your life, make it your aim and object to be completely absorbed in Sri Krishna's service by hearing, chanting, remembering, to attain this brain, then you will be so absorbed in this, you will forget everything else. Where is the material world? If you have just been in Vrindavan with Radhika and Braja Gopis, by hearing, where was the world? Did you notice? No one remembered the lockdown or pandemic or anything or money problems, or anyone is sick, or any, everyone forgot everything. So try to always be, follow Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He is our Bhajan Shiksha Guru, and spend your life absorbing these things, and then, all these things, they become very, very, this is only anusangic, incidental side effect. Pritivimsa Sishyat, and one who is absorbed in this, becomes guru of the whole world. Because the goal of life is praying. Yeah.